Good afternoon, everyone. You guys are the brave and courageous for uh, going through the weather and uh, lightning and thunder and all types of stuff to be here. And uh, we appreciate uh, your taking the time to be here. Uh, let's begin by having a word of prayer and then we'll get right into our service. Lord, uh, we come to you this afternoon with praise and thanksgiving upon our hearts as we gather for worship on this second uh, day of our Holy Week noon services. 
We uh, continue to pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit to be upon us as we gather in your name. And uh, we particularly pray that you pour out your Spirit upon Lynn uh, as she brings us the message and uh, help us to be open and receptive to what it is that you're trying to say to us. And above all, we pray that you be honored and glorified through the worship that we provide. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please open your hymnal to 390, there we go, 399, take my life and let it be. Let's stand and sing. Deep the Father's love. Yes. Uh-huh. 
was beautiful. Thank you. Our scripture today comes from the book of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 37. If you'd like to stand as you are able and follow along with me in the pews. Now, there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now, my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there heard it and said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out, but I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law that this Christ will remain forever, so how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus told them, you are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before the darkness overtakes you. The man who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Put your trust in the light while you have it so that you may become sons of light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I want to talk to you today about a little word, but it's got a whole, it holds a whole lot of meaning with it. The word is unless. You see, we are no different than the people who lived in Jesus' time. We often say one thing and do the opposite. Those are contradictions. They are contradictions in our thoughts, our words, and our actions. So today I want to talk to you about the condition in our lives. You know, the unlesses within which we consciously, even unconsciously, live. Now, mind you, this is not an easy thing to do in today's world. I mean, these unlesses, they're not really true words. Unless, no, that's a real word, but unlesses, I'm taking a lot of liberty here in telling you that today I'm using it as a noun. 
but it is a plural of the word unless. Don't tell your kids this. Don't go preaching, now you have a new English lesson and it's in Webster or what other dictionary. It's not. It's our secret. But we all have unlesses. They are the restrictions, the limitations, and the conditions, you know, the ones that shape and inform our lives and our relationships and understanding of Jesus, of others, even of ourselves. And these unlesses have been with us since time began. Over the years, I've collected some. We all have our little pigeonholes in the back here that we store things in. Here are mine. Unless he apologizes, admits he was wrong, <laughs> and changes his ways, I won't forgive him. Unless I'm busy, productive, and successful, I'm a lazy nobody. Unless my prayer is answered, either I don't have enough faith or God is absent. Unless I hold it all together, meet expectations, keep smiling, you know, well, then something is wrong with me. Unless everything is okay in my life, then nothing is okay in my life. Now, I was tempted to ask each of you when you came in to take a slip of paper, but we'll just do it and keep it to ourselves. And I'd like for you to take a few seconds, a minute or more if you need, that's fine, and fill in the unlesses in your life. Just three instances. Unless I fill in the blank. Unless he or she. Unless Jesus. This is why our unlesses matter. Jesus makes an unless the most important point in today's gospel about the Greeks who want to see him. Unless for Jesus is about seeing. And I wonder why they want to see Jesus. What do you think is going on? Do they want to see the guy who raised Lazarus from the dead? And maybe they've heard about, you know, the spell turning water into wine, healing and restoring sight to the blind, turning, turning a dull day into an absolutely miraculous one, cleansing the temple? Who would dare? Or are they simply looky-loos? You know, maybe they want something from him. Perhaps, perhaps they want his way, truth, and life in their lives. What are their unlesses to see in Jesus? At this point, I think it would be a good idea to do a reality check and ask ourselves the same questions. I wonder if we know what we are asking. The request, sir, we wish to see Jesus seems easy, simple and uncomplicated. But Jesus' response is clearly unexpected. Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth, dies, then it just remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 
What if Jesus is saying that only through death comes life? Unless. And, and, and that unless, what if that unless statement about the grain of wheat is describing the way and the process of seeing Jesus? Maybe we see Jesus in ourselves, others, and the world. You know, every time we recognize and participate in the enlarging of life and bearing much fruit. What is seeing Jesus is less about the messenger and more about the message. What is seeing Jesus is less about looking at what the historical figure did and said and more about experiencing the life he embodied and symbolizes today. What, what if seeing Jesus isn't about the spectacular things that happen around us but about a rhythm of dying and rising within us. Maybe Jesus is saying that unless we are like a grain of wheat that falls into the earth, dies and bears much fruit, we will never see him. Maybe we only ever see him in the letting go that bears much fruit and maybe to look elsewhere, anywhere else, in fact, is to look in the wrong places and to miss him. Over and over, Jesus uses these kinds of unless statements to open our eyes. Very truly, I tell you, unless someone is born again from above, he or she is not able to see the kingdom of God. We find this in John chapter 3, verse 3. And continuing in verse 5, Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, unless someone is born of water and spirit, he or she is not able to enter the kingdom of God. In chapter 6 of ver and verse 53 of John, we hear Jesus continue. Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And in chapter 8 we find, you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am he. Peter then said to him in chapter 13, verse 8, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. And these unlesses? It seems that they are a map of the soul. We could think of these as, I guess you'd say, true unlesses in our lives because they point us to life. And even more lot than life, they reorient the direction of our lives. In fact, they show us what nurtures and nourishes and feeds our lives, and then frees us from the past. Plus, they serve as a great contrast to the numerous false unlesses that we are bombarded with every day. And I think you might have some of your own ideas on this, but I'll share a few. The false unlesses, they're the ways by which we try to stay in control, rule others, or create security. False unlesses maintain boundaries. They maintain boundaries between who is in and who is out. As a result, 
They blind us to who Jesus really and truly is and why he wants to be included in our lives. Ultimately, ultimately these and lesses turn life and faith into a transaction. They leave no room for faith, grace, or growth. By burying or exchanging the worldly drives and motives for submission to Christ's will, we gain spiritual life, which we can experience here and in eternity. This week, I believe, is a perfect time for each of us to do some soul-searching and ask ourselves, how willing are we to bury our own personal goals and ambitions in order to be of real use to God. By death comes life. You see, it's through the death of our personal desires and selfish ambitions that we are able to become servants of God. John 3.16 Jesus the model servant desires that we too join him as a fellow servant. This is the way, he says, to eternal life. He said, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Jesus died for the sins of every man and every woman, all human beings. And to be sure, Jesus, the kernel of wheat, died for the sins of all believers so we could have eternal life with God in heaven. Grains of wheat, that's what we are. Through death, however, we can become the bread of life. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies. If we refuse to choose God over all other choices, we are choosing to be a kernel of wheat that remains a single seed and will never have eternal life. Thanks be to God. I would like to close with a prayer. God, grant that what has been said with our lips that we may believe in our hearts and that what we believe in our hearts we may practice in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Now I ask you to think about these things, to pray about these things, and go serve your God. Serve with patience and passion and be deliberate in enacting your faith. It's not easy. Be steadfast in celebrating the Spirit's power and may peace be your day and your way in the world.